So I'm really putting the shoes through the, the ringer, these trail runners. I've just went through some almighty boggy wet ground. I've had a few issues with the shoes which I'll discuss when we're back at the tent. As you can see, it's, yeah, there's a lot of peat hags, water and the rain's on constantly. Quite a good test for these uh, trail shoes. Uh, yeah, you might just see over there, that's the hill where I started and come up. I walked along the top of it and then we've come along this uh, hill here along the side where all these kind of peat hags are. And that was an absolute mare. And I managed to pick up this bit of track that goes to the... So this goes up to the top of the, the Monroe. Ah, wow. The weather's clearing up a little bit this side. Uh, hopefully it's just going to stay nice enough to get to the top. I need to get back down and I'm actually going to try and go over this way to the right and head down to out to our lodge. Uh, yeah, that's the game plan at the moment. Uh, but if the weather deteriorates really badly, and then it could just be back down the way I came. But we'll see what happens. Oh, cracking views. Made it to the summit of Carn... Right, I'll try that again. Uh, made it to the summit of Carn Vach, I think it's pronounced Vach. And what a walk. Three and a half hours. As usual, what I'll do is I'll put the stats down below just now and I'll give you an idea of how long it took, the height and, yeah, distance, etc. The clouds just coming in now, so I'm trying to, well, if I turn the camera, I'll just get absolutely soaked. Uh, not much in the way of views. And just another rocky summit. I'm glad that's the Glen Sheemon Rose done. Uh, yeah, that's them all bagged. So I'm going to head back off and we'll try and find this lodge. As I keep saying, we'll get a tent set up for tonight. We'll have a bit of a chat about these shoes because my feet are actually aching. <laughs> uh, I don't think they're ideal for the Monroe bagging. Right. Time to go, go. Managed to get nearly to the, the lodge. I'll just turn around in a second and I'll show you the, where it is. There's a clump of trees, a little copse of trees down there in the middle of the shot. And that's where I was looking to camp. And the weather's just starting to really close in now. You've got the, as I said, that's the one I've done last Friday and other ones I've done in the past. But it was good actually finding this uh, like Land Rover track or 4x4 track, because uh, that heads right back down there. So it's quite easy to follow. If I'd started going my own route, it was just a lot of uh, yeah, peat ba bashing, uh, some really deep uh, bits as well to kind of climb in and out of. So I'm glad I found the track. But the rain's starting to come on now, so I need to get down there and get this tent up and something to eat. So this is us at the, it's the outer lodge. That's it there. Hey, this old building here. It used to be a shooting uh, lodge at one point, way, way, way back. Now, I don't know what's happened weather-wise. It was meant to be gusts of, you know, 25, 30 mile an hour winds and yeah, there's nothing now. It's actually really quite calm. And there's Altner Wood, which I might go into and pitch. The only thing I'm wary of in there is the, the trees. At least they're all laying to the left. Uh, stay well clear of that. It's just a lot of them are really old. 
I think, and uh, I'd be quite concerned about one crashing down during the night, especially if the wind does pick up, like they say. But this fence was put up to protect it and, you know, keep the deer out to try and protect it. So it's a bit like Stalag 4, you know, the great escape, so you've got these big massive style to get into it. But this uh, building, another ruin, I would probably made a really good bothy if it was in better condition and could be kind of, you know, done up. But we're basically at the head of the glen and tomorrow morning when I walk out, that's a hell of a walk back, but certainly worth uh, staying tuned for. We'll see what the, the views are like in the morning. Now, I do think there's a couple of rivers I might have to cross. I've got a funny feeling I've got to cross something, so I hope it's uh, doable. Or <laughs> well, I'm in deep duke. So there you go folks, that was a really interesting walk. I uh, really enjoyed that. Quite a hike though. Uh, it was nine miles and I'd done it in about five hours. I'll, I think on the view ranger it can do a 3D animation. I might try and link that somehow, maybe at the end of the film, I don't know. I'll maybe try and share it in some way. But it was a really nice walk. I did enjoy it. Uh, it had its moments, there's some really boggy and you know, you've got your peat hags and things like that, so you're kind of crawling through it, trying to find the best route. And it was really to try and try out these new shoes. I've got these Ultra Lone Peak uh, kind of trail runners. A lot of people have been using them for long distance walks, more so in America. And there's a couple of people in the UK using them, so I was curious to see if they're any good for the Munro bagging. Uh, the jury's out on that one, I'm not sure, because I did have a few issues with my feet sliding about in them. Because the fabric's really thin above the sole, uh, the slightest angle change, uh, you know, when you're skirting around the side of the hill and things like that, your foot kind of slides round on the inside of the, the trainer. So I don't know, I mean, going over the rocky stuff, was really good uh, because it does have a, a protective, uh, uh, like a, a plastic plate inside to stop the jagged rocks uh, basically getting through the sole, uh, so you don't really feel anything like that. So in that respect, they're really good. It's just this movement of your feet at times is a bit disconcerting. Uh, I wore them with Gore-Tex socks, which are actually ringing. So yes, the, the shoes are ringing, the socks are ringing, and I've just got them out there with the rest of my stuff, my wet kit in the vestibule. So I've just had my usual, fed and watered. Uh, it's going to be a long walk out in the morning as well. I think it's about another nine miles. But I think the scenery, from what I remember, it, it was about three years ago I was here, and the scenery is really quite nice. So stay tuned for that. Uh, and you'll get to see what that's like as well. But for the moment, uh, me and my luminous shoes, because I did get them in the, in the green, they kind of glow in the dark. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to watch some stuff on my phone and then hit the hay up early doors for this walkout. So, until the morning, good night. I can safely say that I'm really glad I used those delta pegs, those yellow ground anchors, uh, because the ground was quite soft here obviously with the moss, so these should be digging in quite deep. Uh, but the gusts coming through on this, or the left hand side of the camera, or my right hand side panel here, is uh, yeah, interesting now and again to see at least. One thing I have noticed now is that there's some water droplets near the top of the, the tent here. So, yeah. some water droplets coming through there as well. However, considering the size of the tent, uh, its profile, uh, it's, it's actually holding up pretty good. And there's a little bit of water coming in there, just next to that pole. 
and it's not the it's not the seam. Uh, I've got water coming in on this pole. I don't know where from. As long as this uh, right hand guy line holds up, we're going. So, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's half past five. I've had about, well, I've had another hour of sleep or so there. I think I've had about four hours sleep in total. Uh, the rain and the wind has just been horrendous. Uh, the dust are getting quite strong again now. It's just been torrential, absolutely torrential. So, the downside to uh, this is packing up. Oh, I never look forward to this bit, uh, getting everything packed away and stepping out into that. So, I'm going to grab a, a coffee get myself together and then uh, see, what, uh, see what we're dealing with. I've just stuck myself behind this boulder and the rain is just bonkers as you've seen on the hillside there the, the water coming off is just crazy uh, there's a bridge ahead I'm not entirely sure how many other water crossings there are in my head I'm sure there's a, a section you have to go over uh, I hope not because <laughs> it's going to be difficult but just, it's been a hell of a test for the tent. Uh, the tent's performed really good considering, I've got to be honest. But I think the main thing that really uh, saved the day was those uh, Delta pegs, the, the yellow uh, Delta anchors that I use. Because the moss, the mossy ground was so soft and deep that if I hadn't used them, the tent would never have stayed uh, where it was. <laughs> it would have been obscure. But yeah. Okay, I'm going to get battered on. I'm not sure how much filming I can do because of the weather. It's not easy. Not easy when it's like this, so I'm going to give it my best shot. And we'll get this vlog complete. This rain's just never let up, and the water coming through the glen now is incredible. Amazing. Uh, some forces involved there. I think it's going to get worse now. Anybody coming into the glen, uh, by now the main track will be flooded, without a doubt. Uh, it was about 12 inches deep. Yeah, you'll be wading through it uh, shortly. So it's not far back to the car. I'm going to get all this kit off in the dry gear and then we'll have a little bit of a debrief there uh, but that's it for now absolutely ringing <laughs> just sitting here getting a, a bit of a heat uh, all my wet kits in the back and I've put some uh, dry socks and shoes on that was really really wild coming out uh, I've said that a few times in this vlog but it was really good to try out my kit, especially the new stuff that I've purchased. 
and put it through its paces. The walk in and round to do that Munro was a really good testing ground for those shoes. I mean, you had a uh, kind of gravel track, moss, steep grass, uh, the bogs, as in uh, the peat hags, boggy ground. Then you had the jaggedy rocks at the top of the, the Munro. A really good uh, all-round testing ground that, or circuit, should I say, for testing boots or or shoes. Uh, yeah, they seem to perform OK. I've got these niggles with them in regards to my foot inside sliding to the outer shell. It did hurt my feet a bit. Uh, they were aching later on at night. I'll give them a, another go, but I'm not sure if they're the kind of footwear for me anyway. A really nice walk. Uh, quite a long one though, and I was lucky to get out in the morning. I do know it floods now and again, and we did have a lot of rain there, so I did leave really sharpish because of that. Because had I not been able to get across some of the areas where the, the Land Rover track floods over, and when I was walking through, it was still a good 12 inches deep. Had I not been able to get through that way, then I would have to go back and up round the Monroe and basically retrace my route back and round, potentially, which I didn't really fancy. But a long walk. It's now about quarter to nine. It's taken a good two hours anyway to get out from the camp spot at Outer Lodge, way at the head of the Glen. I'm going to head home. <laughs> That's it. Another little adventure done. And as always, thank you much, very much for watching and subscribing. So, until the next time, take care.